Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Seek NR. Uh, this is a show where I break down the universe of Gotham Knights. It's going to be like a maxi series. Uh, I started realizing, like, you know, I do a lot of long term shows typically on both channels, but I wanted to do something that was like a limited series in a way. And so, what I thought about was this video game Gotham Knights. Now, I know a lot of people out there, typical format is they do live streams and talk over it or they do like reviews, like Angry Joe style, and they have skits and everything, or they just do reviews like I do, where I sit in a chair, I'm not as creative, and I just talk about the stuff I liked and didn't like, and I just thought that was so standard. I said, why don't we really dive into this game, and, and maybe other games in the future, if you guys end up liking this format, uh, where I'll just take like a chapter of the game, and we'll just talk about that, how I felt while playing it, the stuff I learned. So we're gonna get into spoilers, definitely for Gotham Knights. But I figured a lot of people out there were kind of ripping this game apart. And when I was playing it, especially at the beginning, I was like, what are they ripping apart? Like, yeah, there's some graphical issues and there's they had to do a couple patches for the Xbox version. And just in the first like week of the game, I think there was like, like two or three patches. Um, so yeah, there was bugs for sure. And we'll talk about some of them uh, and when I face them in the game. But I figured there's eight chapters in this game. So I'll do a video on each chapter and we'll show some footage of like what I played in that chapter. And then we'll also talk about um, some of the side quests. So this might be like a 15, 20 episode series uh, where I'll also look at the toys because I have the McFarlane toys still in the box. Um, actually, they're right behind me down there. Um, and then also that we'll talk about, which is the Court of Owls comic book, the graphic novel with the mask. And I have volume two as well. And we'll do a review of the Court of Owls comic book because this game kind of pulls a little bit from that. Actually, there's one sequence later on in this game that pulls heavily from a, a sequence, a fan favorite sequence in that graphic novel. So we'll get there for sure. Um, but I'm just gonna break this down, try to do like 10 minute videos of each chapter and tell you what you know I experienced while playing this game and, uh, and good and bad, because I, I certainly found the gameplay itself kind of mindless fun. And I think I just was in the mood for something like that. I'm not a hardcore gamer. I used to be, I used to, you know, game a lot, but you know, I just time and getting older and, and all these things like, uh, plus I have problems with this game. Actually, uh, this game has a seizure warning at the beginning. And there was a couple times where I almost got triggered with a, se a seizure and I had to stop the game and it got, I got sick and like, and I had a reaction to it. And so like, as far as like nauseous and dizzy and, and I'd have to turn the game off. And then what ended up happening is I, kind of calibrated my TV a little bit better and moved it back further. <laughs> so, cause I have a, a decent sized TV that I bought and uh, I'm like, okay, maybe if I just sit further back and it's not like all the, cause when you're driving the motorcycle in this game, like all these white lines go by to give the illusion of speed. But I noticed the character and the, the, on the bike is not really going that much faster. Um, so it's just like to add illusion that you're going faster to, to, I guess, make it seem like you're not looking at a game that's moving at 30 frames per second and that it's moving faster than it is, but it isn't. Uh, so that made me nauseous. And so I found the further back I saw as that, it didn't bother me as much, obviously. So I was like, okay, this is cool. It still bothered me a little bit, but not to the point where I had to stop every hour. Cause the first game, like the first chunk of this game that we're talking about today, chapter one, um, this is the intro of the, the, the game. So the cutscene in the beginning I thought was awesome. And I remember watching it and seeing Rachel Ghoul fighting Batman and just being like, wow, this is amazing. Like this is what a great way to start this game off. And, uh, and then it, you know, moves into the death of Bruce Wayne. And like I said, we're going to get into spoilers. So be prepared. Uh, we're, each chapter I do and each uh, side quest I do, we're going to do full spoilers. Um, but yeah, Batman, Batman dies. We knew that from watching the trailer anyway, but uh, now that we're you know here, I want to give spoiler warnings because we're going to talk about more stuff because after Batman dies, the, the four, the Bat family, essentially, Nightwing, Robin, which is Tim Drake, Robin, um, uh, Jason Todd, Red Hood, and Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, um, Dick Grayson, Nightwing, obviously, they all come together with Alfred and they decide they're going to protect Gotham and work on Batman's last case, the case he was working on before Rachel Ghoul showed up to kill him. And it turns out that those two stories are intertwined, um, kind of in a way that I really wish wasn't, but we'll get there as we get to the end of the game. But the game starts off and you have that, and then you, you go into Gotham, you have to look for Kirk Langstrom, who is a professor, he's Man Bat in the comic books, uh, up there in the corner, uh, way up there. Um, and he's a professor at, at, at Gotham University, and so you go there to try to find him. Turns out he was killed, and uh, his his body was, I think, it was, no, it was left there, actually, because later on you go to the morgue. Um, I was like, did his body get taken by the court? No, they left his body there. But he was working for the Court of Owls, which we're going to find out later in the game, because at this point you don't know the Court of Owls exists. And that's what I liked about the beginning of this game, was that it, it showed Batman die, which I did not expect. Like, like you full-on see 
a rock smash his body and then you see his broken body and he dies in the hands and arms of his bat family when they show up to try to help and he's and he dies right in front of them so i was like okay so there's no doubt that he's dead but as someone who's read the court of owls comic book i know that that doesn't always mean death plus he was fighting rachel ghoul and that also doesn't always mean death uh so so already i was skeptical but i but i had theorized way back when, when when they first announced this game they talked about the court of owls i was like i wonder if bruce is dead is there a chance he might uh be frozen by mr freeze because that's part of the storyline in the comic books mr freeze has helped find you know fine tune the cryogenic uh, uh, process for the court of owls and they use his technology to freeze people and then reanimate them as talons so i was thinking oh that's mr freeze is in the game he was one of the first villains they showed so i thought it was all going to tie together it it doesn't uh, i was right about the bruce wayne thing like i said we'll get there later but i was not uh i was not very uh you know i was really bummed that some of these characters and stories and side quests did not really connect to the main story. Um, I thought that was a bummer <laughs> for sure. Uh, but so at the beginning, after you you know find Kirk Langstrom's body, then you have to break into the police department and uh, and sneak around, uh, which was fun. Got to do some stealth stuff as uh, Jason Todd. And then I go into the morgue where you find Kirk Langstrom's body. You have to do like a forensic test on him, make sure it's really him, make sure he's dead, and uh, and then try to get some clues or evidence. And then while you're down there, you run into Talia Al Ghul, who shows up, and she incinerates her father's body. So her and Rachel Ghul, uh, obviously, were part of the League of Shadows, and she's like, "Yeah, he went rogue, he went crazy, and he uh, jumped in the Lazarus Pit, and then came and uh, attacked Bruce, and it led to his death. I don't know why, but now the League of Shadows are, are without a master, and I've been disowned," is what Talia is saying. She's like, "So I'm just here to kind of make sure he's dead, dead, and uh, and also to just kind of keep an eye on the." the League of Shadows activities, which you find out later is kind of BS. <laughs> but she does take her father's body, puts it in an incinerator, and kills him and burns him for sure. So then you know for a shadow of a doubt that Rachel Ghoul in this universe is gone for good. Um, there's nothing to, you can't reanimate the ashes. But uh, but Bruce, they didn't they didn't show any conclusion there other than he got buried. So it's like, uh, okay, all right. Um, you know, and the first clue you get for the Court of Owls existing, one of them is like a page and it's in the same cemetery that Bruce's body's in. So that was also kind of tipped its hand a little bit towards where the story might go. Um, but then I got to play in the first chapter. I, I What I would do is I would go out. There would be random missions that you can just select and, and pick. And I would do those. And then I would like upgrade my stuff, craft new armor, craft new weapons, um, check my emails. <laughs> There's like stuff there for side stories. Um, and then there was a, a point where I was like, okay, I did all the, the side missions. And then I picked the main, the main mission. And once you're done, there's no other activity in Gotham other than just like random crimes. I'd go back to the Belfry, turn in all my stuff, and uh, and it would be like day one or night one has passed. And then because you did patrol for one night and then night two, if you did it again. And that's my that was my uh, system, my routine. I would just go I would look at everything on the map, highlight it and just go there and knock everything out and then go back to the Belfry. So it was very repetitive. But I found that comforting, like the mindlessness of it for me. I was like, oh, this is nice. I know what to do when, you know, I know what to do after like a long day or if I have time to squeeze in a, you know, an hour or two of the game in the middle of the day. I know that if I do all the missions once and go back to the Belfry, probably an hour has passed. And that is a good jumping off point if I ever need to. So I did that as Jason. And then I got to play as uh, Barbara. She was the second person I played as. And I ran around with her, went and talked to Talia at one point uh, up on a rooftop and tried to get a little bit more information about her. And then um, I also found out about Harley Quinn and that she's at Blackgate. And there was, I guess, a breakout going on. I, I, I guess it, it was definitely looked like a breakout. But uh, they were saying that Harley had information regarding uh, Bruce's last case or Batman's last case. So I switched over to Nightwing after I did all my daily missions and nightly missions as Barbara Gordon. I switched to Nightwing and then went to talk to Harley. And she gave us some clues. We had to go dig around Blackgate for more information. And then we finally started piecing together a possibility or a possible clue towards the Court of Owls. And that's kind of where chapter one leaves you is with that set up and also like a, a reference to Penguin and that he's probably going to take part in the story moving forward. Uh, so we will get into Penguin, we'll get into Court of Owls, we'll get into League of Shadows, all that stuff as we progress through this. But for now, I'm going to stop here and just say the first part of this game, the first chapter, which took me probably like three, four hours maybe, because I'm still, I'm learning stuff, I'm running around doing random crimes, just having fun with the game, trying to, you know, uh, 
process it. Also getting sick at times and having to pause it for like 30 minutes. So it wasn't like three or four hours of straight playthrough, but, uh, but it was still, you know, it was probably the hardest part of the game for me because of how sick I was getting. And once I readjusted things and messed with some of the colors on the TV and sat back further, <laughs> like that helped out big time, helped me enjoy the game a little bit more. It wasn't like I was sitting right next to, in front of the TV. I was a good like 10 feet back, but I needed to be like 15 to 16 feet back. Um, that made the, the, the biggest difference ever was moving back that much further. So I'm glad I did because uh, it, it made me enjoy the last half of this game a lot more. So the first part, I was kind of confused. I was like, yeah, there's some graphical problems. There's some glitches. I'm running into some bugs, but nothing that really upset me. I, the story had locked me in. I was interested because of all this promise of the Court of Owls and how they were going to translate them and what they were going to do. And this big mystery about Gotham and all the crime that has been there all these years and all these like big one percenters that have been hiding in the shadows, waiting for Gotham to kind of need them more. And then you have the League of Shadows who's waiting for Gotham to, or wants to go destroy Gotham and, and rebuild it from ashes. And you had the Court of Owls who like want to keep financing Gotham so that they can get richer and then and, you know, put the push the poor down even more. So both had ways of destroying Gotham. And that's what the game sets up. It's like, okay, you have the League of Shadows who want to destroy this place. And you have uh, that, that want to destroy it physically and, and burn it and then rebuild it and destroy its spirit and everything. And then you have uh, Court of Owls who want to destroy the heart of Gotham and just push everyone down and raise themselves up and uh, and so i like that approach so at this point for a story i was like okay i'm intrigued yes there's problems with the gameplay and stuff but i'm at least intrigued enough in the story to see where it goes from here but it does deteriorate pretty quickly and we'll talk more about that in the next few episodes so if you've played the first chapter you know whatever you think of the game so far let me know down below of this portion of the game and then in every video coming up next we can talk about the next portions of the game and stuff and, and get into those kind of details as well. So, Leah, yeah, again, let me know your thoughts down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in Gotham. Peace.